How should we as Christians address transgendered people? Well, a big debate broke out on this when the SBC president weighed in with his thoughts. We're going to break those down and more tonight. To have a sex before you marry is a bad idea. Don't tell me there's no such thing as gun violence. That just depends on your definition of when life begins. There are problems of sin and habit that cannot be solved outside the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to this episode of Faith vs. Culture right here on the CBN News Channel. My name is Dan Andros. I'm the managing editor of faithwire.com. I'm joined as always by author, pastor Dale Partridge. Dale, what is going on? Hey man, important topic that, um, you know, is obviously an issue that is confronting more and more people and and more and more Christians. And we have to at least have a, a, some discourse around the available options uh, that the Bible presents and um, just wrap our, our, our minds around this topic because I think a lot of pastors are not talking about it. Yeah, and um, so basically what it comes down to here is J.D. Uh, Greer, uh, who is the pastor of Summit Church and also the current president of the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, did a podcast recently. It was, I think, an Ask Him Anything type of podcast. And I'm going to read his quote here. And he said, if a transgender person, you know, came into our church, came into my life, I think my uh, disposition would be to refer to them by their preferred pronoun. And he went on to break that down um, and, you know, explain some of his reasons why. And basically what it came down to was uh, there was this concept of pronoun hospitality, uh, which I found a funny term, but nevertheless uh, expressed sort of the, the Christian position, Dale, where we wanted to uh, sort of, you know, there's this juxtaposition of, well, are we just truthful and just speak the truth and not waver from that? Or uh, do we have a spirit of a, a, a hospitable, a generous sort of spirit where we're trying to uh, show respect uh, to, to fellow people, whether we agree with them or not, on what how they're describing themselves? So, uh, and of course, more and more people now, as it's promoted um, more heavily in culture, are identifying themselves uh, in a you know, as transgender. So um, what, do you, what is your initial reaction to JD's uh, sort of take on it? And, um, you know, where do you come down on that, Dale? Yeah, you know, I, I, um, I, I didn't hear about it until, um, you know, we started discussing this and doing some research on the topic. I listened to the episode in which he released this statement. I don't know much about JD. I, I know who he is. Um, I, I don't know much about his theology either. Um, I've just heard of him, you know, a handful of times, you know, the Bible doesn't speak specifically to this. And this is one of those areas, right. That we have to recognize that when there's, when there's not specific example to it, um, we have to lean on to principles. Um, and, uh, you know, n and not just like, oh, the old Testament talks about it, but the new Testament doesn't. Um, but no, like the Bible doesn't specifically talk about this really anywhere directly. And so you get to lean on biblical principles and the biblical principles uh, can be incredibly strong and clear on how to deal with a certain issue. Uh, on this specific issue, I think it's a little bit difficult. Um, I, I do have an opinion on it. I, I like what JD said. I have some notes over here that I'm looking at. Um, JD said uh, there's a difference between affirmation um, and respect. And I think that's a good, uh, a good distinction. Also, he also pointed out this idea that there's really um, feeling like there's only two options. It's, e it's either affirmation or alienation. And I, I would agree that tends to be the case is that you go, how do you, how do you bridge the gap? Well, the gospel has to be able to bridge the gap because um, we're, we're here to, to be in relationship with those who don't know Christ. Um, and and how, do you, how do you do that? And how do you do that with respect, uh, dignity, integrity, uh, and and also being uh, not violating your own convictions or biblical principles? And so, uh, you know, I think the bigger question that they talk about, you know, is um, I, I think this is the the question that even JD mentioned that's behind the question. And we could talk about this for a minute too, Dan. Is that you know a lot of people are asking how do I how do I confront these people? I think what they're really trying to wonder 
is get some more information on how is gender defined in the Bible. And um, I think it's it's something that Christians, because it be, is becoming such a uh, common reality to deal with, that we should spend some more time doing some research, doing some study, doing some prayer. Um, there's a really good book that I've peeked into. I haven't read the whole thing. Um, I think it's Andrew Walker. Again, JD mentioned this, and I just happened to have uh, taken a look at that book before. It's titled "In." Um, it's titled "God and the Transgender Debate," and I think he does a pretty good job. There's a handful of books out there that do a good job of trying to discuss this complex issue. And you know, you're not going to ever write a book that makes everybody happy. Um, but I think he did a pretty good job. Uh, from what I've read, but he really talks about, you know, viewing gender uh, through three ways, your anatomy, um, your feelings, or your genetics. And I think the Bible really leans on on um, genetics, uh, anatomy, uh, in terms of, you know, every cell is marked with XX or XY um, in terms of uh, identifying gender. Um, well, and that's why, and, and, and so I, I think that's... Yeah, I was just going to hop in there, Dale, because I think, you know, this is where... Uh, there's sort of a breakdown in culture and communication between Christians and non-Christians. And so this is where a lot of the hate label come from. And and I think we can have a knee-jerk jerk re- type reaction sometimes because we, you know, feel maybe this pressure of, you know, culture just going off the rails with people, you know, saying, I'm just going to identify as whatever. Um, but this idea of affirmation versus respect. And then for us trying to, to dive into, well, what does it mean? Like, let's try to understand what it is they're saying um, before we just have a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, exactly. And I think that just public discussion in love and gentleness is really important on this topic. Um, it's not a topic that you can just kind of, you know, yeah, have the, ugh, get away. I don't want to talk about it. That, that's not the way that Jesus would do or w- would react to anybody in any sin. And, um, and you know, we also have to, you know, it's funny how we as a culture have put certain sins on a pedestal as if one sin is more intense than the other. And, and so I think that, um, yeah, getting, doing some research, reading some books, there's some, some fantastic Christian authors that have, have tackled this issue you know, uh, one thing I'll close with, we could jump into the next segment and talk about you know, my perspective, your perspective, Dan, on on what pronouns to use as a Christian and all, all those kind of things. Um, you know, I think the gender thing is, is really, um, we have to remember that I'm not who I feel that I am. Um, and, and instead, as Christians, we are who God says we are or we, who God declares us to be. And, you know, the scriptures are pretty clear about this. You know, in our creation, God has really declared who we are. He's knitted us together in our mother's womb. And so there's a declaration in creation as God speaks creation into existence even um, about who we are. And and I think that's the theological debate uh, about understanding the the mechanics of how that works. Um, It's a huge and complex discussion that I, um, you know, scratch the surface on. Um, but I'm, um, I do think it's something that Christians should be, uh, approaching, reading up on studying and, uh, determining how to, uh, win people to Christ in the midst of these issues. All right. It's a big topic. We're going to break it down some more when we come back on the other side of the break. Uh, this is faith versus culture, including the Chick-fil-A, uh, debacle. I think this, it's all kind of related because, uh, uh, obviously they're in the midst of trying to message a Christian message also uh, not be labeled a hate monger. So um, we'll dive into that and a little bit more when we get back on the other side of the break. Faith versus Culture, CBN News Channel, back in a sec. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at cbnradio.com. Meet the pastors who are preaching the gospel in a fresh, fearless way.
I'm Roberto Torres Cedillo. Join me each week for Next Gen Voices. And watch God transform a generation. Prophecy thousands of years old. We were called to be a light to the world. Being fulfilled today. Discover how. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. Just call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he has, which color he is, this is what I'm doing. See how the people of Israel are fulfilling prophecy. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. By sharing their knowledge. In Africa, in Asia, in South America, in East Europe. And their love. This is how we work. This is us. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. All right, we're back here on Faith versus Culture, CBN News Channel. Dan Andrews here, Dale Partridge there. We're talking about uh, how do we, as Christians, address transgenders. J.D. Greer from uh, the SBC, the president, he talked about this in a recent podcast episode, and it uh, sparked some conversation. So we're going to discuss it here because, uh, you know, we can bury our heads in, our, in the sand all we want, but... The reality, the truth, the facts on the ground are that more and more people are identifying as transgendered. So how do we respond to this? What is the best Christian foot we can put forward? Um, and so last uh, break, we discussed a little bit more about the different positions. But uh, um, Dale, you know, when it comes to how we interact as a Christian, so, you know, the, it can be a tricky territory because I think people are feeling a little conflicted on, well, I don't want to sort of enable, and as we talked about last time, affirm uh, maybe, you know, some of these behaviors and some of these identities and like kind of just making it seem like, oh yeah, these guys are Christians. They're totally cool with, you know, X, Y, and Z. And when in reality we shouldn't be. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to be disrespectful to somebody and we want to try to be able to, uh, you know, love our neighbors uh, without yielding that truth. So it's a tricky balance to walk. Um what, uh, what are your thoughts? What are, what are your kind of first uh, impressions on, um, you know, if someone comes up and they're openly transgender and they're talking about it and somehow you're in the middle of it, um, what would you do? Yeah. I mean, I think it's something that we're going to confront. I mean, almost all of us at some point soon, um, if you haven't already. Um, I have, for sure. Um, and this is my take. You know, I asked the first question to myself is, right, is, and I'll ask it to you guys. Are, are these people Christians, identified Christians? Because if they're a Christian... Um, then there's a whole new set of standards that they have basically submitted themselves to. It's biblical principles. Um, they're declaring the name of Christ and, and therefore um, are accountable to the body of Christ and accountable to the word of God. Um, now, uh, I haven't actually ran into that specific situation of anybody that's calling themselves Christian and, and um, uh, is also uh, transgender. Uh, I have uh, uh, had some several conversations with um, a handful of, of transgender individuals that have had really great, uh, fruitful, gentle, um, enjoyable conversations with these people. And um, and again, I want to point out that there's a again, there's a difference between affirmation and respect. Um, if we got down to the to the root of discussion around you know religion, Christianity, truth, theology, uh, the, absolutely, I'm going to speak the convictions that I have according to the Word of God. Um, um, but in the minute or, uh, of this discussion, um, I'm going to uh, opt for respect, and I I'll tell you why. Um, uh, our our job to those that are outside of the church uh, isn't to point out specific sin. That's not what we're called to do in Scripture, and you actually don't don't see that um, in Scripture. Uh, our our responsibility to the to those that are outside of the church is to share the gospel, and um, when you do that, you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to them that they are a sinner in totality. Um, and so, it, when for anybody that's a Christian that's listening to this, you recognize that you remember that the, the, the moment you became a Christian became the sanctification process of, 
the Holy Spirit illuminating the mass amount of sin in your life. And, um, and that's the Holy Spirit's job is to come into the world and, um, and bring conviction on uh, righteousness and judgment and, and, and the, the conviction of sin. Um, that's what he does, and that's not necessarily our job to do. Now, inside the church, we are to uh, bring church discipline. We are to judge one another according to the word of God in love. But again, outside of the church, it's not our job to do that. Um, and, you know, th- this, if somebody actually accepts the gospel and the Holy Spirit reveals to them that they are a sinner, they're going to um, be convicted. Then, then that, yeah, then that should lead to what I would call like a God caused uh, or God generated um, repentance and transformation process. And what I would ultimately say is rebirth. Um, and remember, Dan, that the reason we all need to be born again is because none of us were born right. And so if you're born a certain way and you feel a certain way, um, you know, none of us were born right. And that's why Jesus says that we need to be born again. No, absolutely. And uh, I think I've said it before in the show. I, I, if I haven't, I want to say it again. But uh, one of the more powerful clips I've seen was when a Christian apologist was speaking in front of um, a group of college students. And, you know, they were jeering him and they were, you know, making all their snide comments. You know, God's a sky fairy, all these other things. And he addressed them and he, and he, and he said, uh, basically, that you know why I, I'm here and why I carry it's like because I am no different than you. I am a sinner. I deserve hell just as much, if not more, than all of you people out there. And I'm telling you, there were a couple hundred kids out there, and they who were all jeering, and they all stopped at that moment when he was des- describing kind of what you were talking about there, about how we're all sinners. And it was like this was shocking information to them. Like they they had not heard that before. And so for him to keep you know, they're so used to just, they, they imagine a Christian just yelling at, uh, at other people and you're, you're doing this and stop doing that. And, and they view us as holier than thou. And so for him to turn that around and say, no, I deserve it too. Like they were shocked by that. And yeah. so, um, and so to your point, I think that's something we have to be aware of as we're, you know, discussing these things with other people, especially unbelievers. Yeah, exactly. And, and the truth is, is that when you're, when you're confronted with the Situation of a transgender individual who is uh, not claiming to be a Christian. Um, uh, you know, if you feel uncomfortable and you have a spiritual conviction, uh, you know, Romans, I think it's chapter 14, talks about, you know, y- you have to follow what your conscience has said in that moment. And, and you sh- you're not to violate your conscience. Actually, it's to, it can be, uh, you know, rectified as, or it could be said as sin if, if you did that. Um but what I uh, would suggest is just use their name, uh, use their first name. Um, if anybody <laughs> desired to, if they changed their name and uh, you asked them, you know, there, there would be no denial of someone, anybody, if they asked you to call them by their new name yep. um, because they changed their name. So just say their name. Um, but if you, uh, if you're like me, I'm comfortable with using their preferred pronoun if uh, they're in that situation. Uh, I, I will use that um, because, again, um, you know, affirmation is different than respect. And um, and it's not my job to point out specific uh, specific sin, but to preach the gospel and to have a cordial and uh, loving conversation with this individual who is just like I was in terms of uh, lost, broken and uh, not necessarily knowing uh, what is right and wrong, according to the word of God through the gospel. And so that's my perspective, you know, um, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm going to stand here white knuckled with it, uh, but the truth is, is that, you know, it's my perspective and uh, people can take it or leave it. All right. Well, hey, we got to take a break is what we got to do right now. We're running out of time in this segment, but we will come back with more on this topic. Faith versus culture here on the CBN News Channel. Back in a sec. Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. I'm Ephraim Graham. 
And this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Takun Olam. This is our nature as a country. To make the world a better place. Literally, we felt the earth shaking. The Christian Broadcasting Network presents To Life. How Israeli volunteers are changing the world. This film needs to be seen by everyone. I was in tears. Now you can own the inspiring documentary to life on DVD. There is blood on our hands if we know and we walk away. I'm so grateful that this film was made. To life can be yours for a gift of $10 or more. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. We know that every minute counts to save life. It'll uh, bless Israel, but it'll also bless all the friends of Israel. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are making the world a better place. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com to get your copy today. All right, we're back. Faith versus Culture, CBN News Channel. Dan Andros here, Dale Partridge there. We're talking about how do we uh, sort of, as Christians, can interact with the increasing number of people who identify as transgender. Um, we went over all this in the first couple segments. If you missed it, go back and check it out. Um, but wanted to loop in this Chick-fil-A story because it's been a big story on Faithwire now for over a week. And uh, if you missed it, basically they stopped funding um, the Salvation Army and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And in an article, an executive was quoted as saying they were sick of the negative press and that they wouldn't be... Um, supporting any, quote, anti-LGBT uh, organizations in the future. And this uh, this upset a lot of people because, you know, people generally like Chick-fil-A, as Christians do, because they stand up for Christian values and they don't bow to the mob. And so a lot of people viewed this as sort of caving to the LGBT pressure. Um, and so, Dale, I think it kind of highlights this fine line of walking the affirmation um, versus respect angle because... You can see what some of the activists want to do here. They they they're not really interested in just having a mutually you know respectful relationship. A lot of them want to shun the Christian view to the dustbins of history. Yeah, I mean, I think about Chick Fil A, and I go, well, one, um, you know, on one hand, I go, it's a business, and um, we shouldn't expect to be like uh, we shouldn't expect it to be the guiding moral star <laughs> right. in right. our life. Um, and so, so you know, we should expect Christ and God's word to be that for us. Um, however, on the other side is that uh, Chick-fil-A is and has benefited from the uh, enormous influence in the Christian community. And what I would say is undeniable their leadership in holding traditional Christian values strong in the public yeah. square. And and so there is um, a responsibility of leadership that spiritual leadership, even by this company, um, um, that I think is uh, what's really in question here. And and I think that we have to remember that when, when um, something of such influence you know, quote, caves, it really does affect other people below in terms of um, their, their confidence or their boldness or their, their, their position. And, and um, I'm not saying that that's right, but I'm saying that it's true, that it does affect those people. And, um, you know, this is why God's, you know, God's word says that, you know, basically love needs to limit our liberty. We don't actually uh, do things in front of certain people, even if it's not sin for us. Uh, we don't do things in front of certain people because it might make somebody else stumble. And so this idea of really just being careful about what we do as individuals, um, you know, because another brother or sister may be influenced by it, um, is an, a principle that I think could apply here in a, in a very unique way. Um, I don't think that there's any moral failure necessarily here. Uh, you know, 
um, Franklin Graham, yeah, put this affirmation out that he talked to Dan Cathy. And I don't think that Chick-fil-A has changed their values internally. Um, but I also think that they're a business and they have to operate a certain way. But again, I also think on the other side is that, you know what, um, they are in a leadership seat in the Christian community. And that means something. I'm not going to say what it means, but it means something. And um, hoping that they continue to be a strong representative of Christian values in the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. I think the one thing we can all, there's been a split kind of view on uh, what to make of this Chick-fil-A thing. Um, and I think the one thing we can all agree on is, hey, let's just pray for them. They, we know they have a lot of influence one way or the other. Um, so uh, let's be praying for them that, that they can continue as they have in the past to glorify God in, in some of the things that they do. So, all right, Dale, we'll be back to wrap it up on the other side of the break uh, for this episode of Faith versus Culture. We'll be back in just a second. It's the new Superbook Bible app. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. From Washington, D.C., uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, Escalating Fight, Jenna Browder, Goes his words carefully, Ben Kennedy, Plan to join him, and Amber Strong. For impeachment grows a little bit louder. Bringing you the political news that matters. We get out and tell the story of the progress that we're making in this country. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6 on the CBN News Channel. We will move the American Embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. As the nations rage, you can stand with Israel. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. Call 1-800-700-7000 and get to life. This is our nature as a country. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he has, which color he is. This is what I'm doing. Support Israel in their time of need. Get to life. Now available on DVD. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. And I wish that other people throughout the world could see this side of Israel. All right, well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Faith versus Culture. Don't forget, you can catch all of the episodes of this program online at the cbnnewschannel.com. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. We'll be praying for you as you go through your week, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time on Faith versus Culture. Thanks for watching. See you next time.